Hi, I'm Landis. And I'm Ryan for Hempfield High School student produced news program, Hempfield Happenings. We are kicking off the October episode with Barnstormer Spirit Night, upcoming freshmen, and many more activities that kick off the school year. Hello, I'm Landis, here with Mr. Bremerski to discuss the new 23-24 school year. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you for coming out, and I really appreciate you uh, here with us today. My pleasure, Landis. Thanks for having me today. It's great to be with you. Uh, the first question I want to say, what does raising the bar mean to you? Yeah, so here at the high school, I know Dr. Brossman started the year talking to the students and staff about raising the bar. and, and what we want to do is build off the success from last year and in a positive way. And so and raising the bar is kind of taking things to that next level, bringing new ideas, um, new opportunities for our students, and also trying to find ways to make sure kids are connected uh, here in the school beyond the four walls of the classroom. What goes into starting a school year with the administrative team, just everyone? What goes into it? Yeah, so there's a, a tremendous amount of work that goes into starting a school year. It starts well before uh, the school year even starts. Uh, so in the kind of late winter, early spring, we're talking about summer projects, things that need to get done over the summer uh, when students and staff aren't here. We're you know creating cleaning schedules for the buildings, making sure everything's ready to go for when our staff and students come back, um, you know, building bus routes, hiring staff, um, trainings for our new teachers and administrators over the summer, uh, and then getting ready to pull that all together for a big kickoff with our staff, and then welcoming our students on the first day and it was a great opening uh, for the start of the school year. Now with raising the bar, what is like the biggest idea you want students to take away from that? Yeah, so the biggest idea for me is to make sure kids feel connected uh, and, and here at the school and um, beyond the four walls of the classroom and making sure that they know that, that our staff truly care about them and that they have at least, and, and hopefully more than that, but at least one staff member that they can go and connect with uh, should they you know, need anything, talk about anything. Um, but I also want students and staff to come with new ideas and fresh perspectives. And when they are able to do that and work uh, with the administration to kind of figure out how do we put these new ideas into practice, then great things happen. And I think a great example of that is the upcoming homecoming parade uh, that came as an idea from our students. And then uh, finally I just wanted to ask what are you looking forward to the most with this 23-24 school year? Yeah, so again, it's been a great start to the school year. What, what I'm excited about are just some of those fresh ideas. Uh, you know, looking to build off of, you know, particularly here at the high school last year, you know, the fall fling, the spring shebang, and then trying to see, you know, homecoming parade. What other things can we do to get kids connected um, beyond the four walls of the classroom? And uh, the ideas are going to come from our students and staff uh, because that's coming together. That's what's going to be able to make it happen. So that's what I'm really excited about. Well, thank you. I really appreciate your time here. Thanks so much. Great to be with you. Thank you, Landis. Earlier in the school year, Hemfield hosted a spirit night at the Lancaster Barnstormer Stadium. There were lots of fun activities and some great baseball. Lexi Robinson looked into what happened during the event. On September 14th, the Lancaster Barnstormers had a Hemfield spirit night. The Clipper Magazine Stadium sold tickets for free to Hemfield students and faculty. Additionally, the first 500 lucky students got a free hat, while Silo the mascot greeted families at the gates with a hug and a photo. The first pitch was thrown by Hempfield teachers, students, and athletes. Oh. Hempfield Chamber Choir sang God Bless America and the National Anthem after cheerleaders performed a chant, cheer, and a dance. I just think it's such a great, you know, environment to bond in, you know, I mean, you get to see people from your school, you get to see their families, and what beats watching baseball? It's just a win-win for everybody. Students from Hemfield came to the Barnstormers to enjoy the game, try various activities and food, and spend time with their friends and family. It's great to do something like this at the beginning of the year that you guys could um, get together and um, foster uh, you know, companionship and fellowship and kind of get to know people. Overall, Hempfield Spirit Night was a big success. 
For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Lexi Robinson. Freshman year is thought out to be super stressful and scary. Tyler Constein talked to current freshmen to disprove the negative expectations of the first year of high school. The class of 28 is just now starting eighth grade year, which means that they'll be freshmen next year, and the thought of high school can cause many different emotions to arise. At Landisville Middle School, the eighth graders are separated into teams, Patriots and Pioneers. I think when students go off to the high school, they are now really officially taking over their education, you know, for their future. It's, they're taking ownership of that. And so they're only four years until they go out to college or head out to the workplace. And so I think there's a real um, just uh, buy-in to their classes. The eighth graders have many expectations as to what high school will be like. Chaotic. Um, a lot of people in the hallways are going to, it's going to be very loud too. The eighth graders here at Landfill Middle School are very optimistic on what high school brings. Probably the new teachers and the new people that we're going to meet. Middle school is an important part of the journey to high school. Here in the middle school there's a lot of support and that's really important. We have the team, uh, teams here in the middle school and, and that is really helpful for making, allowing students to make that transition. But at the high school, you know, it kind of becomes real. They can start taking classes that are focused on the things that they want to do. The class of 27 is just in their first few weeks of high school. This is the beginning of a huge educational adventure. The thought of high school starting can cause many different emotions to arise. Freshmen at Hempfield High School have had many different experiences in the first few weeks of school. My first day of school was really fun. It was easy to find all my classes, and I found them super fast. I expected high school to be like, like different and strange, but honestly, it doesn't feel like a lot different from middle school. It kind of feels like exactly the same. And of course, emotions tend to run high with the thought of high school. Um, yeah, I was like mostly worried about like not having anyone like that I liked in any of my classes and like not being able to find my way around the school. The thought of big changes like starting high school can make people feel many different emotions, but Lanceville Middle School makes sure that the students are ready for high school. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Tyler Constein. Outside of the high school, lots of the elementary schools are also holding events to kick off the school year. Farmdale Elementary held a movie night for the students and families to attend. McKenna showcased how this benefited the community. The school community can have a big impact on the families of a school district, but here at Farmdale Elementary, they are taking the right steps to have exciting activities to build connections between students, parents, and staff outside of the school day. The FPA is the Farmdale Faculty and Parent Association, which holds these events for the kids and their families. We support our students, staff, and faculty by doing tons of fundraisers and fun activities. And us doing fundraisers like the Falcon Dash and our festival, we're able to raise money and do events like these. The FPA provided cotton candy, popcorn, drinks, and a variety of food trucks for everyone to eat and enjoy watching the new Disney Pixar movie, Elemental Outside. But how does this benefit the kids and their families? So I would say, um, such as movie night as tonight, I mean, it's just a time for families to come out and um, just do something free. We don't charge anything. I mean, we do have food trucks, which are uh, for purchase, but we really wanted it to be a time for families to get to know other families, especially at the beginning of the school year. Um, we have new families coming in from outside the district um, starting the school year, and we just wanted this a chance to be um, a time to get to know others. Um, this is a, kind of our kickoff for the year. The organizers were not the only ones who loved movie night. There was also some very positive feedback from the students themselves. Um, I really like to see my friends out of school, and I really like to eat cockatty. <laughs> I like playing with my friends, hanging out with them, and uh, watching like movies and doing what the events are. I like spending time with my friends and eating a lot of junk food. Especially join the friends and the food, honestly. Because I mean, friends are the best part because you get to see your buddies after school and talk about what you guys like learned or like fun stuff that you get to do together. And I just like sitting down and watching a movie or just having a festival. Having activities like movie night can benefit your school's community in so many ways. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm McKenna Straley. Junior Achievement visits the schools of the district every year to prepare the students for their future careers. They teach them many life skills that are not taught in regular school classes. 
Lindsay went to Centerville Middle School to touch on the many benefits. It's like the circuit. I don't know what that does. Junior Achievement is a national nonprofit organization that teaches students to create their own success. Well, hopefully the impact that I would like to see happen, especially at the middle school level, is to have the kids' eyes opened to the fact that there's more out there than they realize. I think it's really good to expose students to um, career opportunities, and Junior Achievement is one part of that. Junior Achievement helps to develop real-life skills that students will use in the future. Um, they go through a lot of different um, activities. So it's not just career stuff, but it's also budgeting, um, it's STEM, so exposure to STEM activities, um, all of which are really helpful uh, in, in the real world. Does anyone know what STEM stands for? What's the S? For the students, Junior Achievement is an eye-opener to the world of careers available after education. Um, I like learning about the different career clusters because like, there's a bunch of different education paths you can take after high school and it kind of depends on what you're interested in and there's like something for everyone. Not only does junior achievement benefit students through the new skills they will obtain, but it creates an environment where the students are able to learn from people in their own communities. The, the volunteers is the best part of junior achievement because students are interacting with folks from the community that have real jobs, that um, would know about soft skills and, and also the nitty gritty of like STEM. Um, so it's really helpful to have them in our building. For over 100 years, Junior Achievement has been providing students in grades K through 12 with soft skills to create their own success. The nonprofit organization has made an impact district wide and will continue to make an impact in the years to come. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Lindsay Over. Every Friday, our student body is cheering on the football team from something we call our student section. A lot more goes into the planning, the themes, and events than you think. Charlotte looked into this and its dynamics. There are a lot of aspects to a Friday night football game at Hempfield. The cheerleaders, the marching band, the game itself, and of course, the student section. To a lot of schools, including Hempfield, the student section is a big part of the high school experience. Um, I think we're all just kind of there to have fun, you know, we're supporting our classmates uh, who we've known for, for a while, so I think it's just fun seeing them out there and being able to root them on every, uh, every Friday night. We cheer no matter if we lose it or win it, just like now! Yeah! Not every game has a full student section, and there are a lot of factors that go into attendance. Yeah, you know, if our team's on a roll. I think more people want to come out and see them, but I think the township rivalry is pretty big. So I think not just the students, but parents from you know all over the all over the district come. But even in rivalry comes the chance to come together. During the Mannheim Township and Hemfield game, the two opposing student sections raised money for Minithon by wearing gold shirts to the game. Gold out was one of the many themes that students could dress for for the Friday night games. So we choose them prior to the season. Um, sometimes there's, there's games, so we're working with Minithon uh, for one game in Township's Minithon. Uh, so that's, that's something that goes like behind the scenes. And... Let's go, <laughs> Every year, the student section has a few leaders to help keep games organized. So it's a passed down tradition, so the seniors from, or the student section leaders from the year before pass it down to the next group and so on and so forth. Students not only have the opportunity for leadership in the stands, but also for the student section club, held during the school day at Hemfield. We elected, I guess what we called club officers, and we let the kids choose who they thought would be good leaders in the club. Now that is definitely different than the student section leaders. Like there are definitely student section leaders, and then there's the leaders that we have in our club, hopefully at some point those can be the same people. The club hopes to improve how the student section works in the future to improve school spirit. We're, our hope is to get the freshmen a little more involved. Um, I think the, the complaint was that the freshmen don't know the cheers or the chants. Um, so if we can practice that kind of stuff in club, then maybe they would feel a little more comfortable. They would show up to some more things, so. In a way, the student section is all about bringing people together, 
through charity, through fun themes, and through the common hope that Hempfield will win. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Charlotte Robards. All high schools have at least one other school that they consider their rival. This creates competition and more excitement for their students. Emma Spiker showcased how rivalries affect the football community. For a Hempfield student athlete, the rival game can be the most difficult game of the season. However, it can bring two football communities together. The preparation for a rival game can start months before the event and provide the athlete with the motivation needed to play their best. Throughout the summer, our goal has been like this date right now. Uh, we had this marked up on our schedule forever. As soon as you see like Township Week, every, like everybody's eyes lights up. And then like in practice, the energy is a lot different. Everybody wants to try. Everybody's involved and bought in. I mean, so, I mean, the energy is a lot higher and it's a lot more fun playing a team that you know like that you marked up all year since last year in the winter. Student athletes can benefit from being a part of a rivalry. I mean this playing township it like it's taught me a lot um, just to keep my composure. Um, I have a big target on my back and so that, that's one thing that me and my parents talk about is just playing the football that I know and then like applying that to life I mean I guess you could like do it to anything. Like people are always going to tell you like you can't do things or it's, it's always going to be negative talk but you just got to see past it and like do like have your own like goal and just go do it. Being involved in a rivalry can bring schools together. For these rivals, that was Minithon. We rival so much and we have two of the biggest schools in the district, you know, we can just make so much money for the kids. I mean, I saw the the poster in the lunchroom. It was like rivals on the field but like uh, I think it was friends in the fight or something like that. I mean, I think that's really big. Um, just spreading the awareness and just like bringing everybody together in some sense. With two rivals coming together, it's a lot of people. So having them all come together, it's just one big celebration. For student athletes, rivalries make the game of football more fun. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Emma Spiker. The events we hold at Hempfield are all planned and run by the student council representatives. The council consists of students and their advisors who work together to create activities. Is he found out more in, about how it works? It's the most wonderful time of the year. Homecoming. Powerpuff. Go Powerpuff cheerleaders. Go Lily and Kylie from Homecoming. Go Powerpuff. Go Junior Girls. Homecoming. 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 Vote Kenneth for Homecoming King. Homecoming is like the best part of the entire year. The best part of the entire year. I know we're all excited for these events, but have you ever thought about how they were planned? I spoke to Mr. Bermani, the council's advisor, about student council's main meaning. So student council's main purpose is to essentially uh, be a pulse for the whole school. We have representatives per grade from freshmen to seniors and then we have additional five officers as well. Their job is to kind of uh, initiate programs or activities or uh, experiences which would be beneficial to the student body. In order to keep student council organized and on track, each person has a certain role. So um, we're led by, we have, we have student representatives and leadership, so we have a president, her name is Avery Landis. Um, she usually will lead the, each meeting. I spoke with Avery to get her perspective on the matter basically oversee like and like and kind of the voice for student council. Student council does the planning for events like homecoming or powder puff during their meetings. So basically when we have our meetings like if people have been talking about having a certain event sometimes like people will just say it at the meeting and then we'll think about like how realistic that would be for us to do um, basically just like the logistics of everything. After the council votes on the event, they then have to get it approved and finalized. It basically depends on what kind of event it is. If it's like in this school, then we'll have like a principal or somebody kind of like approve if we can do it in the school. Or if it's something more like, like widespread, then we need to get like the board's approval. Student council has arranged some original events and even some new ones. So we have some standard, play, uh, standard events that always happen. We have the grill out, which is the homecoming week. We have the crowning of the uh, homecoming king on the halftime of Powder Puff. Then we have the crowning of the homecoming queen on Friday night at the football game. 
And then this year, for the first time, brand new event, Dr. Huff has put a ton of time into. We're going to have a homecoming community parade, which you'll be hearing more information about soon. Although Student Council only contains a portion of the students at HHS, they do their best to represent all of us. Basically, we're here for your voice, so anything that you guys have to say, any concerns that you guys have, like, it's our job to basically kind of see those, like, issues and put them in the plan or kind of fix those issues, anything that you guys have. Now you can watch and enjoy events like the Homecoming Parade while knowing how Student Council planned it. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Izzy Heisey. A soccer club right here in Lancaster is growing their international program day by day. Alex Byrne touched on the impact it creates on the soccer community. Lancaster Football Club, also known as LFC, is creating new opportunities for players around the world. <laughs> LFC is a local football club in Lancaster with ties both domestic and foreign. Our program essentially is a collegiate placement program where um, players come to us, gives them a chance to get culturally integrated um, into America, um, allows colleges and coaches to come see them, for the boys to go see colleges and get a good feel for um, their next steps and um, opportunities like that. At LFC, players are presented with a unique opportunity to combine both education and football, focusing on their sport and education at once. Um, one thing that I wasn't familiar with with starting this is there are no college scholarships in other countries. So if a player is really good at a sport and he wants to pursue education, um, he has a really difficult decision to make in any other country like, you know, England or Spain as an example. You have to pick the pro route without pursuing education or you have to pick education without continuing to pursue um, you know, your professional you know, dreams. The program has connections with local schools such as Millersville University, Harrisburg Area Community College, and Lancaster Catholic High School, all of whom support the students' academic growth. I'm here to this country for the opportunity on, on, on football and also to, to study here because it's the only country that I know that you can uh, study and play soccer at the same time. And yeah, that's it. Thank you to, to the American country. In addition to their education, students focus heavily on their athletic abilities. So we've got some really talented boys here, um, all foreign, foreign lads. So we're trying to bridge that gap between the U.S. athleticism and the European kind of uh, technicality. So. so we're currently ranked fourth in the region, I believe, or maybe even third now. Um, so we had two tough losses to the top two teams, but uh, on both, both, both um, games we showed we can easily challenge uh, at the top top end of the league. So, Despite their losses, they continue to support each other as a team. I think the thing that most people are not aware of yet, because it's still a very young club, is that it's not a club. It's, it's, it's simply not. I would say it's, it's much more of a community. And that community has proceeded to push players onto the next level, both on and off the field. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Alex Burden. Students in high school are approaching graduation and will eventually need to get a job. Alexis looked into students having part-time jobs while attending high school. Many students leave school to go to their part-time jobs. There's a lot of benefits and stressors to this schedule. Keeping up with schoolwork and job responsibilities requires time management skills from students. It's honestly not that bad. I mean, uh, Silver Spring kind of like lets me out semi-early. So I don't work there till very late. So then when I get back, I have time to do homework and stuff. And then I just go there for a few hours, but it's nice because then I can make some cash. Even before working, students learn to advocate for themselves by getting their workers permit. I just, I just went to the office and I like applied for one. And then you get to pick, you have to pick it up later. Even though it can be stressful, working teaches students valuable lessons. Yeah, I think definitely it just like shows you like how you are like, cause like when you get into the real world, you're just definitely gonna have to like, communicate with people and it like gives you a good sense of like communication with others and just how you interact with people. I think it just gives you good communication skills. For some students, working during the summer fits better in their schedule. You have more time, homework, schoolwork, after school activities. Working part time during the school year can be stressful, but allows students to get a sneak peek at the real world after high school. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Alexis Kohler. Thank you for watching this month's episode of Hemfield Happenings. We will be back next month with more information on what's happening inside the district. We hope you have a happy Halloween.
For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Landis Snow. And I'm Ryan Kern. I'm out here in Hemfield High School interviewing people on what their favorite thing on the Halloween season is. I like just trick or treat and getting all the candy, you know. Uh, my favorite thing about the Halloween season got to be like the vampire aesthetic. I really like that. My favorite thing about Halloween season probably the food. Anything pumpkin flavored, pumpkin pie, <laughs> all the spooky stuff. Trick or treating. Field of screams. Field of screams. I think I love that it's now acceptable that I can watch horror movies like 24/7, and my wife has to deal with it. Um, my favorite thing about the Halloween season would have to be seeing all the Halloween decorations all around town. Um, candy, and I just like Halloween. I like having fun, and I like the candy. Um, the colors, they're very beautiful. My favorite thing is all the um, fall decorations. Probably like the movies. Yeah, the movies. Costumes. I'm watching The Nightmare Before Christmas. The candy. Candy. Um, the candy. The pumpkins. I love the decorations. I'm a fan of the scary movie marathons. I like the corn mazes. I like going trick or treating and I like candy. Uh, I'd have to say the weather. Um, probably decorating. Watching scary movies. What's your favorite thing about the Halloween season? Uh, candy. The weather. Um, I like the costumes. <laughs>